All right, what's going on, guys? All right, I wanted to talk about one thing today, and that's about this ACB and the reverse split. You guys probably know about reverse splits and what they are, um, but you probably don't know what happens if you own options. So we're going to go over what happens if you have um, options before a reverse split and what happens to them afterward, all right? So smash the like button, smash the like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead. Drop a comment below um, if you have any more questions after this video. So, you know... Um, <clears throat> ACB decided they're going to do a reverse split because their shares did this uh, from all the way there, all the way down here. So what a reverse split is, is when they take the, the outstanding shares and they uh, they destroy everything and they redistribute them as smaller amount of shares. So in this case, they'll take they'll take 100 shares for every 100 shares. They'll make it one share. Um, you have a split like that or some companies where they do it like 50 shares become one share or 12 shares. So ACB is going to do a 12 to one ratio where they're going to have every 12 shares will become one share. Um, that's not as bad as these guys who do, you know, 300 to one. Uh, it's this company, uh, Chesapeake Energy, Chesapeake Energy just did a CHK. They just did a 200 to one. So that means for every 200 shares you had, it would only become one share. And if you ask me, that's just that's just straight garbage. But what they're doing is they're, uh, you know, they're consolidating the shares so that the stock price can actually go above one dollar. Because the New York Stock Exchange, if you're under for over 30 days, you can become delisted. They have to file an extension. They'll get another 30 or 60 days, but they have to hurry up and be compliant within the next 60 days and if the stock price stays under and it can't go back up, then they're going to be basically forced to do a reverse split. Now, I wanted to show you guys what happens if you already own the shares. Obviously, if you own the shares, you know what happens during a reverse split. Your shares are going to turn into mush and you only gonna have one share for every 12 or for every 200. In this case, you have one for every 12. So if I had, uh, you know, 12 shares in here, I'm going to end up with one at the reverse split. And all of my shares are going to be combined to become whatever the price of 12 shares would be at the price where they are now. So 72 times 12 should give you an idea of what the price would be for the, sh the shares. So it's going to be around the nine. I mean, it's going to be around, uh, you know, close to the $12 range or close to the, you know, $10 range once it's over. OK, guys. So judging from where we are right now, let's talk about what happens if you have an option. Obviously, option is 100 shares. Uh, you're tying up 100 shares in the future. So what happens if you own an option uh, and then this happens? OK, so we're going to go over that one second. Let me just make sure nobody can call in because that would be devastating. I'm just making a video and someone calls in. All right. So you see, I got 14 contracts here. So we're going to talk about that in a little while. Um, RIP to my profits, right? So we're gonna go down to this is a recent one that I just did. It's called Chesapeake Energy. And this this option is what I got in exchange for um waiting until after a re a reverse split. So you guys are wondering what happens. I'm gonna tell you right here. So you see I had 26 contracts. I paid three cents for each contract. So it cost me uh twenty six dollars or whatever to get uh, <clears throat> 26 of these, right? Oh, that's just what they were worth at the time. They're actually worth more than that because it's it's going to be the 26 plus the 52. That's how much they actually were. Um, and now we're down to basically one cent. Okay, so I can't. It says at the bottom you can close out your position in this option, but you can't buy additional contracts. It means I can buy more and I can sell what I have. Well, the problem is. If you see here, where it says ask 0 0.01, that means the other person is trying to sell these at at basically 125. They have 125 of these that just selling at one penny. And the person on the left is who would be buying it. But since no one's buying it, there's like no one to sell it to. There's open, there's 41,000 of these and open interest is just sitting there and it's 608 volume, which would imply that people, you know, basically sold it. But now everything is dead on this trade, like at the point where there's no delta, no gammas, no vegas, no thetas, no nothing. Now, I could do one of two things. I can wait until this expires in January the 15th, 2021. And when it expires, I'll be able to then pick up 
I believe I'm going to be able to pick up 100 shares at, at, at half of a penny, except that those half is, those shares are going to be divided by 12 still. So you take a half a penny and times that by 100, you know, and then you're going to get um, 50 bucks or whatever. And that's going to be like, I can only pick up basically, you know, it's going to be like, I can only pick up um, out of the hundred shares, I, you know, 12, to, it's only going to be like 10 shares I can pick up guys at 10 bucks. So I'm going to have to like, I, they're going to be, you know, I guess they'll be worth a hundred bucks. If my math is right, it will be worth a hundred bucks at $10 a share. I'll have basically 10 of those for the most part. And then I'm going to pay basically a half a dollar for each one. Uh, or or a half a dollar to own basically ten of those, or five dollars. So yeah, I'm going to be basically paying half of that. So it's going to cost me fifty bucks to pick up a hundred shares, which will then be worth fifty more bucks. So technically, it's looking like I double, but I really didn't. I mean, that's that's, but I don't think that's exactly how it works. I don't think the math comes out like that. I feel like what they're going to do is take the twelve shares out of the options, and then you're just going to end with ten shares, and then you got to still spend. Uh, you know, basically, it's gonna be kind of funky. But but long story short, I have to have enough money in here to exercise at whatever they exercise at. I'm still not sure exactly where or like how much the exercise price is gonna be. But as you can see, I can never make money off this option. This options is like totally dead. It's over. Uh, I mean, I could have gotten rid of it at this price, like you know, a couple days ago. But it's pretty much a wrap on that, guys. So, I mean, basically, I just lose all my money. I would rather wait for these to exercise. I got 26 of these, so I'm going to get 2,600 shares. And then I think it's 2,600 shares. And then divide that by 12 to 1, um, leaving me with looking stupid. Now, the only way that I could be, I mean, I could be wrong. And then maybe when this exercise, I'm going to buy at actually a half a penny. I mean, a half a dollar for every 100 shares. That would be nice because then I would be buying, you know, fifty dollars for every hundred, and then I mean, I guess you know, then I mean, I, I guess it, then it would actually make sense, you know, if it, you know, if, if that happens. But my options don't expire for a year, so I have to wait a whole year, and the price, like I said, right after reverse is going to be at ten bucks. A year from now, that price could be back down to two dollars again, or it could be down to four dollars or five dollars or something, depending on how bad the company does. And then it's not going to be such a good deal anymore because you're going to be basically paying more for the shares than you just, you know, basically could have just bought them. And, you know, so long story short, you this doesn't this doesn't look like something you want to be dealing with. It's going to take all kinds of effort to figure out how much money you're going to lose. And it's pretty safe to say you're going to lose all of it. So I don't I don't even want to I don't know. I don't want to deal with that. I feel like that sucks. Um, here I am having to decide if I'm just going to take this 40 percent ill on these contracts, I already sold the ones I had yesterday. I could actually wait for this to go back up to 13 or 14 or 15 if there would even be a spike. I mean, if this could even spike, I don't know how it would spike, but if it were to spike, I could just wait for two extra cents and then sell these 14 contracts. Or I could do like the other one and just it's only 100 bucks, then I'll just wait it out and see what happens, right? Um, but like I said, this could turn into a disaster right after the, uh, right after the reverse split. So... You know, if that happens, then I'm screwed, guys. So that's why I was saying, you know, beware of these reverse splits. There's a lot of research that needs to be done. If somebody pretty much knows exactly how that math breaks down, let me know in the comments below as far as for the option and how much I'll actually get because I was just just got done eating lobster. I'm like dumb in the mind. I'm just happy right now. But anyways, let me know what you think um, the, the price is going to be in the comments below. I'm going to find out a little later and probably put the answer at the top of the comments, but you guys can like work on that. But you basically see that's not something you want to be doing, right? You don't want to be holding these options going into it and then they expire. Uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe if they only expire a couple months from now, you'd be better off, but mine's expire such a far away. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe if my options are still worth something and then the price like triples within a year, then maybe it still would make sense, right? Maybe, I don't know. But you guys let me know in the comments below. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know. Talk to you guys later. All right? Peace.